Hello. Hello. Uh, I'm Tim Rogers. And I'm Gita Jackson. And we're from uh, the website Kotaku.com. We are. <laughs> we wanted to do a show, so we're doing a show. And uh, I, I look for inspiration, sometimes without knowing that you're looking for inspiration. You're looking for inspiration. And uh, I saw a, a thread on Twitter, because, you know, I can't, can't get away from that website. Uh, follow me on Twitter, by the way. Uh, follow her on Twitter as well. Uh, I saw a thread on Twitter that was like, what's the worst box art ever? And there's this long thread. And it's, everybody was just replying with the same box art we've been saying is the worst box art ever since the 90s. It's like somebody decided in the 90s what all the worst box art is. And uh, I think a lot of that box art's pretty good. So we're gonna clean house, right? Yeah, because dunking is easy. Dunking is easy. And uh, what we're about to do is shoot a bunch of threes. Hell yeah. I think. We're gonna say nice stuff. We're gonna be nice. It's good to be nice. We're gonna be nice for about 30 minutes. Have you ever done that? I don't know if I've ever made it 30 minutes. Okay, first one. The beautiful illustration. Aerobiz. First of all, this game owns. Uh, yeah? I haven't played it. Uh, it's, a, it's a Koei simulation. Uh, okay. So it's, it's no Ruby party, but uh, all right. it's a good game. My buddy Michael Kerwin says he learned every country's flag from playing this game. Okay. Oh, that's awesome. This art is incredible. It is a lovely illustration, and I feel like it who, actually gives you in the, the the vibe of the game very well. Who put this on a worst game box art list? It, like that's that actually feels like it's a mistake. This uh, these are in alphabetical order. Yeah. Uh, so it's 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 a coincidence that this one is also about being an air traffic controller. So when I look at this, I don't have any question at all what that guy does. Yeah, he is making it very clear to me. I also sort of, I, it does uh, give you a sense of chaos very well. You can see the sweat drop coming off of his face. Yeah, however, also I know air traffic controllers have to be very calm. Yeah. Notice he's not using a contraction. I am an air traffic controller, not exactly. I'm. Okay. Uh, Every individual element of this box art is actually incredible. Yeah, this is beautiful. This box art could be the best man at my wedding. I hope it is. Superb value, easy loading. like. I miss this this cereal box era of, yeah. uh, of video game box art where yeah. it's listing stuff like ingredients. And look, cyberpunk is two words with a hyphen. You know, extreme graphic design gets bemoaned, but honestly, this kind of outs. Put me in the golden zone. Um, so I played this, I tried to play this game for about half an hour and I came up to the first monster and got so scared I had to uninstall the game and then drag it to my trash and then empty the trash. And if I'd seen this box art, I probably would not have done that. And that is a huge compliment to give it, I think. Because you want to see when this happens. Yeah, absolutely. That guy, who does that guy look like? He almost looks kind of like a young Sean Bean. He was in the <laughs> film Silent Hill. Yeah, Hell. he does look a lot like Sean Bean. We need Sean Bean in more video games. Okay. This destroys. This, okay, this, this is so good. This is incredible. The photography is incredible. The fashion is incredible. The typography. The, I love everyone's colors. expression. They're all having fun in a different way. Party fun Mattel version. Yeah. Um, why does this show up on bad box art lists? Real people. It always shows up. Yes, yeah, so this is the first instance of this phenomenon because it has real people on it. I want to cop that girl's sweater so bad. Vintage video game likers did not like seeing real people. They wanted it to look like a game. Okay, first of all, that I'm cat admit, is bad. I do not like cats, period. However, this box art makes me think maybe I've just not met a cat who's bad enough. <laughs> You know, most cats are actually this bad, so. This, this totally rules. Well, I just, like, I, there should be a cartoon about that cat. That cat is awesome. Yeah, I would, like, that would, that would kick the crap out of Heathcliff. So this is no better <laughs> so, or worse than most DVD covers, and I don't see a lot of people complaining about that. And it's, that. Uh, games always fighting for legitimacy and whatnot, yeah. right? And it's like, this, this deserves a place on a shelf. Yeah. Like, at the, the 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 front of Walmart, you know, yeah. where the where the where yeah, the DVDs absolutely. are. Yeah, absolutely. No, like, this is. Uh, you think about the thing that Kurt Cobain said about having his CDs in Walmart because that's where he bought music when he was a kid. Exactly. The same thing with this. And it's bold. Yeah. It's bold, and it's proud of itself. I love this. I legitimately love this. Yeah, I this am is not incredible. being ironic. This, this is, is amazing. So this, Every part of it's good. This game was directed by uh, Yuji Naka. It was a Fist of the North Star game. Oh, oh, amazing. So it came over to the U.S. as a game called Black Belt. They, they stripped it of any of its plot. However, I think you just, anybody talking smack about any Sega Master System box. No taste. Is 
like those those grid lines are beautiful. I Look think there's going to be a couple more. Look at that font. Here. I love it. It's it's incredible. It's I don't know. It just looks good. Bomberman. Give some some humanity to those Bomberman. So those very realistic faces. Yeah, it's like they kind of just like cut that out and then. Yeah. They didn't even have Photoshop in 1990, so they, they just they lovingly glued illustrated it and then a man's eyes inside a, of that face. Used a photo, a color photocopier. Mm -hmm. So the Bomberman story, the game, the original game actually has like a weird sci-fi plot where you're these robots fighting to earn your humanity, and it's like this kind of communicates. This is before they solidified the cutesy Sanrio looking. Oh. Yo, I. Look I love how this. Terrifying this is. Okay. This I, is so scary. I love <laughs> this so because great. because because. I like, I genuinely like thinking about how much more terrifying and interesting French people's nightmares are. <laughs> and that's what this looks like. Yeah. This looks like really what does. I imagine a French person's nightmare looks like. And it's like so addictive it should be illegal. Like they, this is extreme, 1996, right? Yeah. And like so addictive, dot, dot, the dot, 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 the illegal, addictive, that's like a quadruple okay. word score. Not to, to lay this one on you, but there's a reason why people don't like this box art. And it yeah. has everything to do with it being a game about being a hairdresser. Exactly. And that's really, this is fine. This is not one of the worst at all. This is fine. It absolutely, completely describes exactly what is going to go on in this game. The game is sponsored by Red Ken. This is it's, it sells It sells the game to its target audience. It's a game, exactly. about, it's a game about cutting hair. Like, I mean, I don't know. What more, what more can you really do? All my favorite games are tautologies, and this, this is one of them. This is, this is so famous among, uh, among box art aficionados and connoisseurs because it's a box art inside of a box art. And you get the Konami logo twice. Yep. It's the game so nice they branded it twice. It's something, oh, the first time I saw it's this, team. I didn't actually see that it was box art in box art, so it was like a nice surprise. You for were just me. seeing the sweet anime. Exactly. And it's like, why not, like, it's framing the anime like the art that it is. So a lot of these things also, like, look like they're experimental, like they're outsider art. You know, like, this looks like something that would show up in a punk scene. Look this looks like the LP cover for like some also ran California hardcore band. Yeah. And people are ragging on it because they just, they don't know how. This has an aesthetic and it's like they yeah. look at it and they're just thinking it's weird. The guy's mouth is kind of, yeah. you know, he's, he's got this doofus buck teeth mouth. Also the developer pick and choose. Heck yeah. You can pick and I, choose. The, it reminds me the developer has a variety. So this one looks like either art from this the Weimar Republic owns. or like an 80s new wave album cover. And both of those things are yeah. among the two dopest things of all time. Like this, this in an alternate universe could be a Roxy music cover. Look at her doing like sort of a sort of a JoJo pose How almost. And then the dope like, is that shirt. And then what whatever this logo is at the top, Prism, uh, is that the so, publisher or the so good? The, like that looks amazing. I love it. It's just the whole thing is just flowed out very well. Hey oh, man. columns three. Here we go. Columns. Uh, again, we got a real person. Wait, isn't that one of the guys from Giant Bomb? I prepared that joke ahead of time. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Like, uh, so this is again. This is a, a a box art that has a person on it. You know, for the people that are buying columns, which are your aunt and yeah. perhaps your uncle, they see this. They see that That's guy. That's actually my uncle. It Larry. feels unintimidating to them. Yeah. I, I mean, again, I don't know. Colors are good. This is so good. satanic. I love it so much. This is the best. Yeah. This, this is the best. This rule is like a psycho. Yeah. Like the typography. The the like look at the the like lightning this is like and the crack. A heavy metal magazine. The cover. Satan Goat. And it's so good. Satan Goat Inferno Chimp Silver Stormtrooper U.S. Gold. Guy on the left is like, ah, uh, and the guy on the right is like. Yeah. If I was six, this would be my favorite thing of all time. The guy on the left is like, yeah. It. The guy on the right is like, all right. <laughs> so this like okay. actually makes me so mad that people don't like this because everything about it is good. I'm, like I'm almost embarrassed to have liked video games in the 90s when basically that was the era that produced the people who made fun of this box art. Oh I don't understand who would make it. I really don't understand it. I feel is this like something like Sean Baby would write like 30 words about how it's 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 bad. This, this is, is like beautiful. An anime Tom of this is like, cover. I want like, I want it to just stay on that for like a million Come years. Come back, please. Come back, crude buster. Um, so first of all, who doesn't like dogs? Who doesn't like dogs? Who doesn't like dogs? Uh, number two, <laughs> Dalma it's like it's it's like encouraging me to complete the sentence. Yeah. Dalmatians for me to play and have fun with. Exactly. And look, there's a little Dalmatians secret Dalmatian right above the A. 
I didn't notice that one. Before. Grandma sees it and it says, Dalmatians for my grandson to enjoy. Exactly. Dalmatians for my daughter. So this is actually a very realistic depiction of what deal or no deal actually is. I've actually never seen deal or no is. deal. What it is, is you got stuff in a box and you have to guess what's in the box and then you call a man and he tells you what's in the box. And that's what deal or no deal is. So, so this is what, this is very accurate. Did this guy just like, did I leave my back door unlocked and, and this guy came in and Yeah, he's gonna call the banker and tell you whether or not there's money in that box. I mean, yeah, that's, th this is a lasting image. I'm gonna remember that. This is like the British version or this what? Slays. Okay, this rules. This slays. This, this is like why insane. Why did we not get this Mario? Look yeah. at his like Tom Selleck mullet. I just noticed. So I'm imagining so like like in the '90s, like people people just smacking this down, being like, "This isn't Mario." Like, but this rules. Like, like Pauline is Look in some how much Tron of a baller laser cage. He looks like yeah, Pauline is in this laser cage. Donkey Kong Donkey is Kong. horrifying. And then just Mario, like a hero, like a legend with that He's golden kind of the worst hammer. hammer. It's like a golden hammer. It yeah. almost like has a lightning bolt on it. Dudes with attitude. This is very honest. Like, that's exactly what that's I'm seeing. That's exactly what I'm seeing. And I have to say, I love every single font that is on the cover of this. Man, the They're flat all top good. and then the she And those are hand-drawn, too. You can tell because oh, yeah. the teeth aren't consistent. Oh, yeah. That's awesome. Hand-drawn font is, uh, you, is something I like. I'm a big really fan of that. You really don't get a lot of that anymore. And I feel like that artistry should be celebrated every time you see it. And we know exactly what the dudes have. They got attitude. Man, and yeah, the, and the colors, the colors are good. They're very good. It, it does all the primary very tropical. colors. Stuff. Both of these own. Yeah, these own a lot. Great. These own a lot. These are very plugged in to what Japanese horror was, cinema was doing in 2002 before yeah. it started getting wholesale imported into the United States. Yeah. It's got a very zini quality, a very grindhouse quality, and this is an aesthetic that is important to horror. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this this just looks really good. And it actually fits with this, like, the subtitle being based on a true story. Yes! Like, like yeah. it, it fits with, that's the kind of subtitle that a horror movie Very would Texas have. Chainsaw Master. Fester's Quest. Now, I've played this game, and I know for a fact that it is a Quester's Fest. In that, if you enjoy quests, you will, it, it's, it's a celebration, it's a festival. Like, okay, I genuinely like the composition of this. Like, I like where the yeah. Nintendo seal of quality is. Notice yeah. it's bigger than it is on some other games. Yeah. And it nestles in there underneath the castle and next to Fester's face. It really feels like they thought about that. This is an Adams Family character. However, you don't have to know anything about the Adams Family to look at this and be like, I'm in for something weird if I see this. Here's another one of these. The blue and yellow, but no red. Listen, first we gotta talk about, look okay, at the, yeah, the, yeah. the kerning on Ghost House versus the kerning on the Sega card. That yeah. is just so much intentionality and thought it's went into this. It's tasteful. The, gr the gray outline, yes. like dividing Ghost House and the Sega And then card. the placement of the grid and the size of the grid really, uh, it's, such, it's like an iconic look. If this was an album cover, we would be celebrating it for being iconic. And again, Master System, the grid lines. The, look at the thumbnail, the healthy thumbnail he's got. So healthy. It's a he, right? That was, a, that was I, don't, I don't know. They. Uh, Eco. This box, this is the box art that inspired people to say, to think the game is called ICO. Yeah. A lot of people still do. They still think it's but a cat. But also, like, a lot of Americans bought this sight unseen and fell in love with this game. It's got that so, Hardy Boys, Boys Adventure vibe to yeah. it that I think appeals to people. So here's what I see when I see this. I get genuinely nostalgic for Super Nintendo games, which is what Eco felt like. It felt like the perfect Super Nintendo game with modern graphics. Imagine party babies. I love every single part of this. It's just like say say this out with a comma after imagine. Here's imagine, comma. Imagine party, party babies. babies. So, in addition to being the perfect box, this game is also a strategy guide yeah. for the game. Because if the game, the goal of the game is to imagine party babies, what better way to inspire the player's imagination of party babies than to literally show them? They party just babies. look like they're having a good time. Look at all the happy babies. A baby at a party can't not be having this. a good time. Iron Sword, oh, Wizarding Warriors. Designed oh my God. by that my, is by my friend uh, Steve Pickford, by the way. That's incredible. Uh, um, uh, that we, is Fabio, right? That is that is one hundred percent legit Fabio. That's so cool. This always makes it on worst of all time lists because, because hehe, <laughs> Fabio. This owns. This, this was a video game in nineteen eighty nine, like. Like if this being was the cover of culture, like a prog rock album, to be people would be like, "Yo, this rules." Yeah, this rules. This totally, totally rules. Okay. And then we have like the Listen, exact, the exact opposite here is a American a painting girl, of a little girl is like an actually very interesting and good doll company that strove to like empower young girls with stories of girls throughout history, and they always use these style of illustrations in their books. I know because I had Addie in all of her books. Addie was the best one. Um, and there's nothing 
wrong with it. This is actually a very nicely rendered illustration of a young girl. Yeah. I don't understand why it's on this list. I mean, she's finding a way. I want to know where she's going. I love the spelling of Carnage. 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 I love it. I love it. I actually love it. It is like the most, like, best example of the really obtuse spellings of words in the extreme time of graphic design. This reminds me of, of uh, toys in the, in the 1990s. Yeah. Like my little brother. When you're making box art for Game Boy Advance, you have to contend with that weird metallic gradient over there on the left. Yeah. So that reminds me of the toys my little brother used to collect. I want to just say hi to my little brother. Every yeah. single part of this is good. This also reminds me of my little brother. Uh, Killer Kong, Spectrum 48K. I like in Speed Horse. Oh, I love that it's made by Blaby. I was about to say, Blaby. What is Blaby? Look at the this. Blabby baby. They say he's a killer Kong, but he just seems like he's having a good time. Yeah. He doesn't seem like he wants to kill you. He just no. wants to like share a chuckle with you. This game is, of course, a, a, a Donkey Kong clone. However, the pink and the gorilla, I love it. Lighthouse the Dark Being. This honestly looks like a less intense version of those, you know, what's that poster, movie poster designer that does those illustrated posters where it's just everybody's head, you know, it's everybody in the movie's head with scenes from the, you know, that you know, type of iconic poster. I don't know that guy's he name. He did the Harry Potter He one. does all the uh, Indiana Jones, yeah. Star Wars. This is striving for that. I don't think quite gets it there, but it gives me a it's, sense it's of It's bold. Of what adventure. is that weird robot Leonardo da Vinci bird? Oh, the famous one. Yeah. This one's usually up at the top, isn't it? Yeah, and this, I... It looks like a pulp novel cover. Yes. Like a weird pulp novel cover. And the, like this is, these are the things that excited children to buy these things. They might seem silly now as an adult, but look like... Look at this guy. These bright, you know, colors that are often on the color wheel and the city in the background of the explosion. When you were like a five-year-old boy, like you saw that and you were like, hell yeah. And there, the, the Capcom template with the, the background. All of the design elements cool in this grid. fascinate me. Another, another box with this a grid. This is some, these are 90s design elements that are now, oh, it's really 80s, I guess, 1987. I believe uh, the, the quote unquote problem with this one was that it doesn't really reflect what Metro Cross is in the game, which Metro Cross is like based on Pac-Land. It's like an isometric mm -hmm. skateboarding game by Atari. But it's so cool. Again, it's a real person. It's a real person. And game I love the didn't Metro say, oh, logo. Yeah, that rules. So good. Moonfall. I believe I this is a Finnish video game. Dope space city in the background. Just look at that. This reminds Don't you want to live there? Like a children's book. I want. I, not only do I want to live there, I want to broadcast a uh, uh, a news show live from that city. Wouldn't that be so cool? That would be the Don't thing. Don't you want to move there? I mean, what a lovingly illustrated. I just. I, I love how like easy it is to look at that city. Like the, the weird curling yeah. things coming around the spherical tops to the building. What a dream there. Okay, first. Like, seriously, it's Mr. Blobby. Blobby, Blobby, Blobby. So first of all, yeah, it tells you the three things you need to know about the game. <laughs> Number Just one, Blobby. Blobby, Blobby, Blobby. Two, Blobby. Three, Blobby. So wait, is Mr. Blobby a BBC thing? I mean, it's, it's got BBC uh, over. We're just coming, taking a look at Mr. Blobby. There. Coming closer. Is that Baby Blobby? That's Baby Blobby. And then Mrs. Blobby, and then I guess the one on the right is Mr. Blobby? It must be. I mean, those those Press colors are incredible. The background's incredible. Like, it really is. I, just, I would I wear an it. outfit in that. This again My has ballot to do. Studio. All it has to do with is being a game about spelling. That's yeah. all that it is. You can argue, and I think is accurate, that this has this particular kind of graphic design because it is a game that is targeted towards girls. It's to However, be sold in specific parts of Roma. I, I did right? ballet like, when I was like, you know, six to ten. Yeah. This is a game I would pick up. I love it. Because it's your ballet. ballet studio. It's about ballet and there's ballerinas on it. Yeah. And again, if this has the graphic design of like a deer hunter game, yeah. and they don't put those on the list. Exactly. Right? So this is actually good graphic design. Yeah, this is good. Colors is. are good. Yeah. It reminds me of that uh, Field of Magic game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. So I think this ends up on the list because it's got a real human girl, mm -hmm. and then it's got silhouettes of men, one of whom has a football, and the other one has a guitar. And your typical game journalist would look at this and be like, oh, That's what happened. That's a hypothesis. That's what happened. That's my sure. hypothesis. This reminds me of one of my favorite episodes of Garth Mundy's Dark Place, Scotch Mist. And anything that reminds me of that can't be bad. So that's all yeah. I have to say. <laughs> Man. This looks like a D&D campaign, right? And that's yeah. what this game is. Like, I don't understand being mad at something for being honest about what it is. It's like uh, 
Is that guy a druid? That's the mystery. Yeah, so I, like, I mean, I actually, I wonder if that's a druid, and I'm sure the game w would teach I'm me. I'm sure they'd let you know. Okay. Uh, this ends up this on worst list. So, I mean, again, we noticed Night it's, Trap it's, it's a, a, it's a cool human. game. So I don't understand why. It's a real human. It's Man, just that about actually being a real human. That actually is good graphic design too. It's the, uh, it, it is like a great, like, pulp movie cover. And most, I think most video game box art strives to look cinematic, and this is one that I feel truly does. It captures the genre of trash that it's trying to emulate, and also, I love it. Also, I love the, you just gotta love the 32X spine. The I do spine. love the 32X spine. So, this is is truly gorgeous. I, I would, want to I would put this. this on my wall. Yeah, yeah, I would put this on so my wall. So cool. So this is for the Atari 400 uh, slash 800. It was two different Ataris, which is, you know, they were, they were a little confusing back then about which was which. Um, like, this just looks really good. This is good. so cool, this is so cool. I can imagine an artist being asked to make some sort of a narrative illustration describing whatever, whatever's going on in the back seat. Then. And it's just like, it's a castle? I don't know, that rules, and he's this eating cookies. This reminds me of like, this is Palamedes. Italian comedy movies from the 70s. Oh, yeah. Posters, it's know? just wild and busy looking. Yeah, it's like out of control. There's I've something really intriguing this. about it, though. This is an arcade game uh, okay. by Taito. It's called uh, Paramedis. It's a, it's a Japanese game. So it's like a dice game. You roll dice. Mm, that does I mean, not sound. Colors, the colors are beautiful. Again, I would wear an outfit in all of those colors. Yeah, it's just very good. Here's the most famous one. We don't have nearly enough time to talk about this. It's so good. Uh, it's this so is Phalanx. Um, so here's the thing. This ends up usually like in number one, number two, number three on the worst box art of all time lists. And the reason is, it's an old guy with a banjo. What does that have to do with the game space? It's like, yeah, it was 1992. It's been 26 years, and you're still talking about it. And it still shows up. Uh, so Look you got owned. Beautiful this. that photograph is. Look at the lighting and the composition on this. This is beautifully designed. It's a designed. beautiful photo. It's just a wonderful photo. Like, yeah. that's like, it, you, it gets you thinking about whatever the game is. I feel like people, Pure pinball. I don't, I feel like I've been talking about the people that I assume don't like this. Yeah. If you've played pinball, you know that these are what pinball Pinball, pinball marquees like. have weird stuff up yeah. on the front and it's to, I mean, you're just, None you're flipping the ball around, the, the, the bumpers. Like, yeah. yeah, it's like, it's not, these you're, are, you're always supposed to, this, the box is taking the place of a pinball marquee. It's giving you, yeah. An yeah. Imag it's make, inspiring the imagination. Girls with guns. Why not? I'm not mad at that. Okay, so this rules. This is really great. First Both of all, look at that orange and teal back in 1992. The perspective Cutting on edge. that building too is so good. Yeah, I love very shocking the perspective. italic impact font there. And Rival turf exclamation the point. Exclamation point. The this, rounded uh, top of the exclamation in point. In Japan, is also this great. game I believe is called Rushing Beat. So Ooh. it's like uh, giving it an exclamation point in English is kind of. That feels like part of the box art. Yeah. The Jalico logo. The, How bad do you want that jacket? That the, red the jacket. The matching, like the like the white shirt, black shirt, uh, red bandana, red jacket. You know, it's like I don't know. Oh. This is great because it believe, tells uh, a story. So you see, there's a, a skeleton. skeleton, then a ghost lady. And then the same lady. This lady, she's a vampire this time. She though. has been given flesh. It's really, so you know. So look at that skeleton down there. She seems pretty okay with she being a skeleton. She isn't fully decomposed. No. So yeah, this is cool. Like. I don't know who Mr. Weems is. Or what I his really would love to know is. Mr. Weems. Please let me know. Also, it's in the range of what, about 199? Oh, yeah. You think? That's what it's Snow White and the Seven Clever Boys. They've been upgraded to Clever Boys. For, for years, the dwarfs have lacked an adjective. And now they have one. Now they have an adjective. And it's positive. They're clever. And they're boys. clever. And we're not calling them dwarfs, we're, we're describing them as boys. They're clever boys. And that evil queen, you know, she's evil. You know, she's she evil. She had an adjective for years. He's so jaunty. They look He's very, just happy to be here. I mean, yeah, they're they're really just bringing back good memories. That's Phoenix Games once again. Sonic Schoolhouse. This is completely in like consistent it's, with Sonic it's, it's graphic an, design. It's, it's an education game. Yeah, it is. It is. It has all the. It has the colors. Mm -hmm. um, it's been smoothed out a bit, like mm -hmm. with the the smooth sort of CG look, yeah. to make it definitely feel more like an edutainment game. It looks like, so it, looks it, like it looks closer to the, the font than it does to a traditional Sonic pixel art illustration. This could be the cover for a, a textbook. It could be, and like you know what? A textbook that gets I'm kids I'm sure kids interested. would love that. And it's like that works. 
This owns. This is so cool. So this, like, this, this like, what? Why would you not like this? Like, this, this rules. American Laser Games, first of all, that is what? a game company name. What? That's and amazing. This, this like reminds me of like your your weird post-apocalyptic films, like Blood yep. of Heroes. Yeah. Yep, 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 yep. Like, like weird ones, like you know, Mad Max. Yeah. Uh, this course. is. This feels very Mad Max. Like we've got, we've got space back original there. Original Mad Max. And then this pirate here with the laser eye. I don't know. It's a weird looking this man. is like not corny Firefly. I love it. It's great. I, I straight up love that. Street Warrior. This There's a war on the streets and somebody's got to fight it. And it, why not make it be those guys? Every element of this cover served a purpose. Two buff men in sweatpants. Mean Dog in the background, like slightly off center, so it's not too, you know, not distracting the eye too much. There's a dumpster on fire. Yeah, it's you just see, the red in the middle. Yeah. You see exactly what you need to see, and it's, you know, it's cool that these men don't skip leg day. They've uh, never skipped. They have not skipped a single leg day since birth. Rip their oh, necks, man. So I don't, I don't get this. Uh, Yo, that this logo. Rules. Look yeah. at that logo. The sword cutting down through. Oh the my dude. god! I'm That's so incredible. into that. I'm so, 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 so into that. And for the people like 30 years in the future who wanted to rip the, the, the cartridge, they know exactly how big the memory is. Oh, wow. um, also, I just, I think that illustration is striking and incredible. It's weird that it's like a blonde It's again guy. another one of these boys' adventure type yeah. like covers. If this was a choose your own adventure book, you'd pick it up right away. It, it definitely looks like a like a good pulp novel. Yeah. So this is the Amiga version of Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo. Look at how soulful Akuma by Game Tech. looks. There's something like very passionate and sad in his face. Yeah, this this is weird as heck, and I love it. I love those like Cheeto explosions down yeah. there, like the weird the weird broccoli texture. Yeah, you know? they like, do look literally exactly like broccoli. It could just be Photoshop broccoli, which rules. Look at and that building on it. Like this is just like it's extremely just striking. Very celebratory of Chun Li's thick thighs. So this is a arcade flyer, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Look at also April O'Neil, she looks so dope though. Look again, at it's OG a, it's, video journalist. It's a, real, it's a real person, it's a yeah. real person. You know, I so, love, yeah. like this is proving to me that April O'Neil's iconic uh, like comic book look also works in real life. Yeah. I didn't believe it, but now I see it. And like this is like for 1989 big tease hair. That is like a very nice tease hair. Yeah. It's just got a lot of body, it looks great. And it's just so interesting to see an actual human wearing yellow and not a cartoon. Yeah. Elder Scrolls Arena, like, okay. Another one that is Come a on. metal album cover, people yeah. can be like, dope. This this looks like a Dungeons and Dragons. This is what Bethesda was going for. Yeah. Like, I personally don't think Elder Scrolls is any smarter than this. It's like, no not. offense to Elder Scrolls. Like, it's cool because it's like, you get to just dive into a big fantasy well, I world think with the all this schlocky stuff. The thing that people like about Elder Scrolls is that it is like a very traditional fantasy world, but it's like 10% smarter. Like they would, they would rather see this. Uh, they would rather see the box be like a, a symbol. If right? this like a was a Neil Stevenson book cover, I would not bad enough. Yeah, this. this is I, what I that don't looks understand like. why you this wouldn't like so this. This is so evocative. This is like I'm very into it. I there's so many layers to that illustration. So Broder, Broderbund did a lot of covers for the NES that were very evocative of atmosphere and they yeah. really didn't they didn't this go for like a depiction of literally what, what the, in game the game is but it's giving you a feeling of it looks beautiful intensity and it includes a password feature okay every part of this is good this is another no one that part it's of like it is, bad. is it like sean baby made fun of this just because he wanted to show like sean baby was writing a list probably of worst game box art and then he's like man i love that box art for the third world war I guess I'll say like I'll I'll pretend I don't like it. First of all, I love that it's the three the I I I yeah, it's like so good. Bill Clinton shaking hands with Saddam Hussein. Why? It's still relevant. Though. How is it still a world war when they're shaking <laughs> These hands? These are so relevant to us I now. need to know. Like I love that. That's incredible. Tommy Lasorda. Um, I don't know anything about baseball, so you're gonna have to help me out on this. Well, one. I was a manager of the Los Angeles uh, Dodgers at the time. Um, this just notice looks exactly like a baseball. It card. says it says Sega on his hat, and then Sega Genesis up there, and then Genesis down there, and Sega Genesis up there. They want I, you to know. I love the weird. It's it's eyeball ping pong, and it's it's like interactive at that. Point. It looks exactly like a baseball card, which is uh, for this ratio of yeah. box is completely ideal. So we've noticed that boxes with people on them tend to get references worst box art. And that's a real person, however, an artistic representation of so it. So much is happening here. But you know, before we started recording this video, this is I was the listening to just a lot of Andrew WK. And I feel like because of that, you gotta get I ready to really, roll for Tongue really, of the Fat Man. really, really like this. So Tongue of the Fat Man was like the go-to game to make fun of for magazines like Electronic Gaming Monthly in the early 1990s. It was always, it was name dropped a lot as like a game that was bad or dumb. It's an Activision made fighting game. 
Uh, Mandu Spike Palace was its uh, another name for it. That's a weird striking box. That's amazing. It's really cool. Tune Struck. So is this Who Framed Roger Rabbit? I, I don't understand. I, it looks exactly like that. Because that looks like Christopher Lloyd. It does look Framed. exactly like Christopher Lloyd. Yeah, so it's like, is this, I believe it is set in the world? It's Virgin Interactive? I don't, I don't I get it. I hope so. This is, I mean, I'm very intrigued, especially as someone who really liked Who Framed Roger Rabbit. I, I want to play this, and that's like... I'm struck it, now with, with the terrifying imagination of what it means to be struck by a tune. Trevor McFur in the Crescent Galaxy. I feel like... Oh, man. Wow. Yeah, this... This is so soulful. This is so romantic. I this love has, it. This has heart, man. This There's has a heart a lot, the size of its head. A lot of love went into not just this game, but There's this cover art and this shot. title. It's yeah. for the Atari Jaguar. It starts, it's about cats. It's got a representation of the screenshot being illustrated. Mm -hmm. And then it's got two different logo styles. It's just like, it's it's weird. Is this a uh, Leafield or a Leafield alike illustration? I don't know. It does look it does look Leafieldy. Yeah, I mean the thing that people really liked about Leafield in the '90s was that his faces were really dynamic. I don't yeah. think he really understood a lot of things about anatomy, but it, you can't say that his use of light and shadow was bad. Yeah, this is it weird actually, as heck. His inking was so this is a right. this is a Japanese game that was. I think people. Disagreed with the the title styling, like how big the title is. It's dope though. Hey punk, are you tough enough? Master the moves to master me. That's a cool title for a game, man. Um, I don't really understand this one. This was uh, this was in the packet I was given, and it's like, oh, it's a modern PlayStation VR game. Apparently, this must have been in some recent box art list because this is like a very new game. This looks like a Harry Potter spinoff. I'm not mad at it. Werewolves Within. I'm pretty sure that looks exactly like whatever the game is. Yeah, you know, people liked Fables. And it's so like, I don't see why they can't like this. I, I know what I need, and I get it. You'll need just, those! I'll need those, I'll need those. Okay, like, I got mad when I saw this. I like how friendly this is. This is one of the greatest looking things I've ever seen in my life. And the fact that this ever showed up on the worst box art of all I time I love list. his outfit. I love, just like, that's a... That's a, Lion. The vest. I love him. And shorts. And then you see all the characters belt. lined up at the bottom. I love this. Like standing up, you know, like Barbie dolls. And Sega like Saturn sign is always so good. I love the, just the the whole flow of it. The, the colors silver are just, S logo with the, the blue. The colors ball. are incredible. Okay, this is weird as heck. This looks like I the love cover this. for like a, a melt banana. Yeah. Cover. So this is this is a Koei. Uh, Horse racing simulator winning post three for the PlayStation, yeah. 1998. This is like a um, Japanese noise punk fan's album she's cover. She's got a mask and this her so horses cool. are small and they're on a leash like they're dogs. Can I cosplay this? This is amazing. Like this, like this totally rules. I want a t-shirt of this, like right away. <laughs> I'm so into it. You've got to have something wrong with you to not like that one. Oh, it's Xenon 2 Mega Blast. Yo. I believe I'm like blown this away. Was, a, uh, was a bitmap brothers game. Uh, that's for people who think I don't know anything about it. <laughs> um, I'm trying to allow my brain to process all of this. It reminds me of like, like it's not happening. So it's like 1989. This reminds me of like Michael Bro. You know Michael Bro? Mm -hmm. Like Michael Bro games. So it's like it reminds me of Michael Bro. And uh, it's like it took until now for this to look Yeah, cool. this is an this aesthetic that time. indie game people are still chasing. A beautiful aesthetic. Oh, I believe that's the end of our program. Oh, that was X. That was Xenon. So if I guess only we could switch to the full camera view of us. Look at us in the corner. Look, look at us just hanging out in Kotaku City. Well, that was it. Well, uh, that's it, right? We did it. That's it. <laughs> uh, that's it. It's the end of the show. We said a bunch of nice things. Look at that. We're How not. How good do you feel? I mean, I feel, I feel fantastic. I feel so positive. I feel like I could run a mile. Oh. Good night. <laughs> what? Does that mean it's just gonna the video's just gonna like cut off? Bye. <laughs>